In this video, I'm going to show you how to add shadow formatting to an image in Python so that you can take an email like this and make it look something like this. This idea is courtesy of subscriber Benjamin Weckerly, who said he likes to add the drop shadow rectangle to the image to make it look better on the page. And to be honest, I do this all the time too. So without further ado, let's get started. In previous videos, I've shown a few different ways to add images to an Outlook email. And believe it or not, this will be yet another way to add an image to an email. But this method gives you access to some of the image formatting options that you'll need to add a shadow, or for that matter, a glow or another effect on an image. I'm going to be using IDLE for this exercise, but go ahead and use whatever code editor that you wish. Let's import the Win32.com library. I'm going to demonstrate this using the birthday email I've used before. If you need that image, click the video link description. Assign the path of the image file to the image path variable. Make sure you prefix the string with an R so that Python knows it's a raw string. Next, I'm going to use an HTML template for this email. You can copy this from the video description. If you want to see more on using email templates, check out the link above. You'll notice that I have the word image in all uppercase letters in curly braces. This is basically going to provide the means for me to identify where in this email I need to put the image. Okay, next, go ahead and create an instance of Outlook. Then create a message item. Set the to attribute. the subject, and finally set the HTML body attribute using the template variable we created. Now for the part that's different. Outlook has access to a document inspector, which gives you access to a word editor. That's right, you can essentially edit this document using the word API. Then, to display the inspector on the screen, use the display method. You can now see the template on the screen with the image placeholder. Next, I'm going to access the Word document that this inspector is working on. To get this, use the Word Editor property of the inspector. Now, the approach I'm going to use is this. I'm going to locate that image placeholder, I'm going to delete that text, and I'm going to use the position of that text as the starting point for where I need to put the image. To do this, I need to get a range that represents the entire document, and the content property returns a range object of the entire document. Now that I have a range, I'm going to set up the find tool by telling it what text I want to find, then I'm going to call the execute method to execute the search from the beginning of this range until I find what I'm looking for. When it finds the text I'm requesting, it will move the range of the selection to the location of that text that I've searched for. Normally you could just use the find and replace functionality, but for some reason I can't get it to work, and this seems to be a common problem with Pi132 from my research. However, we can do something just as good. I can set the text of the selected range to an empty string. To insert the image with the selected range, use inline shapes, and then use the add picture method. Pass in the image path, and then 0, and then 1. These last two arguments mean that I want to link to the file, false, and that I want a copy of the image to be saved with the document, true. We're going to assign this to the image variable so that we can continue to make modifications. The image has a property called shadow, which is an object that controls, you guessed it, the shadow of this inline shape. The first thing we need to do is set up the shadow type. There are, from what I found, 43 different shadow types. The shadow types 1 through 20 are an assortment of flat styled shadows. The next 23 types correspond to the shadow presets that you can find in the shadow formatting options. 21 through 29 are outer shadows, 30 through 38 are inner shadows, and 39 through 43 are perspective shadows. For this project, we're going to use type 21. You can see that a shadow has now been added to the image, and as it is, it actually looks pretty good, and I probably wouldn't make any changes. However, if you want something that looks a bit more like the drop shadow quick style that you find in the quick styles, then you'll need to make just a few changes. If you open up the image formatting options, you'll see a bunch of options here. Now, not all of these have one-to-one -one correlations to Pi132's options, but several of them do. 
First, let's change the blur to 21 points. Next, set the transparency to 0.35, which corresponds to 35%. You can also change the X and Y offsets, which adjusts how far the image is from the top and the bottom, and I believe these offsets are correlated to the angle and distance, which is in the Outlook tool. Now, if somebody wants to take the time to figure out that calculation, please share it with the community in the video description. Okay, now we can save the message and then close the inspector. You've now learned another way to add images to an Outlook email and how to add shadow formatting to make those images look better. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that bell if you want to see more content like this in the future. See you in the next video.